What does your body feel like in zero gravity? What inspires you to become an astronaut? What exercise do you do? And do you sweat in space? What do yo-yo work in microgravity? So it works. And welcome to the final event for NASA's Year of Education on Station. We've had two educators um, over the course, course of the past year uh, on board the International Space Station, and we've kept them very busy. Um, and to wrap up the event, we've got a room full of people who helped make it happen, as well as the International Space Station uh, Operations Integration Manager, Kenny Todd, who's going to tell us a little bit later about some of the behind-the-scenes work. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at the video highlighting some of the uh, facts and figures from the past year. The year of education on station, or YES, featured 64 downlinks. Yeah, hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Two teachers were among the 15 astronauts on station involved in YES. If you spin a fidget spinner in space, does it just keep spinning? What is your favorite view from the ISS? What's the food really like up there? During the year, more than 1,000 questions were asked by students and teachers from 27 states, plus D.C., Puerto Rico, and Canada. One downlink included an international audience and questioned submissions from Paraguay, Nepal, Kosovo, Madagascar, Guinea, Morocco, Ukraine, and Kyrgyzstan. Astronauts traveled nearly 375,000 miles during YES downlinks. That's more than one and a half trips to the moon. Over the entire year of education on station, astronauts traveled over 153 million miles. That's more than a return trip from Mars. This year, more than 175,000 students and 40,000 teachers watched education downlinks from all over the world. So as you can see, it's been a very exciting year, and, a, and I think a lot of work went into making it happen. But um, Kenny, maybe you can tell us a little bit about why this was something important for NASA to do. Sure. Um, we found ourselves, you know, a year ago in a very, what I'll call a fortuitous sort of situation where we had two honest-to-goodness trained educators on board, and, and, and they were back-to-back -back for a full 12-month period. And um, we thought that's a great opportunity, and working with the Office of Education folks uh, here, um, decided it would be a great opportunity to, to do a couple of things. First, first of all, it'll give us an opportunity to say thanks. Thanks to the, to the educators out there. We recognize what you do day in and day out, the care and passion that you bring to your jobs. It's an opportunity through, uh, you know, thank a teacher uh, week and uh, appreciation week for our, for our educators to say thanks. Thanks from NASA. Thanks for all of, from all of us who, who do this work day in and day out because somebody like you helped to, to make it possible for us to be here. And then, and then uh, second of all, uh, frankly, I think we have probably one of the coolest classrooms that you can have, right? I would say on the planet, but it really is off the planet. So I, I think I can say be comfortable in saying it's the coolest, you know, uh, classroom off the planet. But anyway, so just just the opportunity to uh, to maybe come alongside the, the the educators and say, look, we we have a classroom here. We have some things that we can show you. Uh, how, to, how to explain to your students some of these things that just are only in words and textbooks, and we can, we can demonstrate that. So anyway, that was really, really the goal, and hopefully we've been able to uh, accomplish that. I think we'll see maybe that we have accomplished a lot of that. Um, now, we said that we've had two educators on board the space station. They weren't actually up at the same time, and the one who kicked it off wasn't able to be here with us today, but we have a message from him from Russia, and that is uh, astronaut Joe Acaba. We'll see that next. Hi everyone, I wish I could be with you all today as you celebrate the end of the year of education on station, but I'm tuning in from here in Russia and cheering on Ricky as he wraps up his expedition. Ricky, I know you've been enjoying your time up there on the station and have been able to continue our mission of sending education from the station to classrooms around the world. I wish you safe travels home and can't wait to see you in a few days, buddy. I'll be there to greet you. Have a great day. That again was Joe Acaba, and we're going to be speaking in just a moment with astronaut Ricky Arnold, who is on board the International Space Station, getting ready to make his way home soon. Um, while we wait for that to kick off, Kenny, would you say that there's anything that you have actually learned during the year of education? 
You know, every time I hear one of these events over the downlink, it's, uh, it's inspiring to me because uh, the, the questions that, the, that come from the audience, you know, whether it's a group of, of college students or a group of, of, of young folks uh, in an elementary school, it's amazing the, the level of thought that's gone into it and, and, uh, and the oohs and the ahs that you hear, uh, having not been in the audience, but you can hear it in, in their voice and you can hear it in the crowd. It's, it's, uh, again, it's very invigorating for those of us to do this day in and day out. It is. I think we're just about ready to start. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? The International Space Station is ready for the event. JC Education, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Year of Education. How do you hear me? Have you loud and clear? Welcome aboard the International Space Station, uh, your venue for the Year of Education in, on Station. Ricky, this is JSC Deputy Center Director Vanessa Weich. Just want to thank you for all you've done this year for Year of Education on Station. It's been quite an amazing year. We have representatives here in the audience from NASA Johnson Space Center. We have people online from headquarters, all the NASA centers, and social media followers all across the globe. We just want to thank you, and uh, we're happy to kick off this event. And here's the very first question. Hi, Ricky. I bring greetings from Mike Kincaid. This is Diane Dutour in the Office of STEM Engagement at NASA Headquarters, and the first question comes from our colleagues in education down at the Stennis Space Center. What unique perspective do you feel you brought to the table for your mission as someone with a background in education? Hey, Diane, it's great to hear your voice. Um, you know, we, we, ha we arrived here with the, the training and the skills required to do the job as an astronaut. I think the unique perspective that I'll carry back and that Joe, Dottie, and Barb carried back is uh, the perspective of an educator who has a professional educator who's worked in, uh, in the most sophisticated orbiting platform humans have ever built. And to bring that knowledge and the teacher's eyes back to Earth and to be able to share that experience um, is going to be something that's going to be a, a really fabulous opportunity for the education community in general. And I think in particular, uh, when we look at how we want to develop students' uh, skills for STEM careers, we've been here, we've been immersed in a culture, I think the preeminent uh, civilian engineering organization or entity that exists on Earth, which is NASA, and to see what skills are really required. And with our background in, in pedagogy, how do we develop those skills in students? I think that's the real perspective, is the one we can bring back uh, from the International Space Station. Hi, Ricky. I'm Rachel Berry from the International Space Station Program Science Office. As you wrap up the year of education on station, what is the one thing you want students to know about the science being conducted aboard the orbiting laboratory? Yeah, this, the science we do up here on the International Space Station has two purposes. It's uh, to improve life on Earth. And for students sitting in classrooms, we're laying the groundwork for your exploration uh, of the solar system, human exploration of the solar system. And the science is amazing. Uh, and apart from the science, uh, I think we're also showing a model of how humans, when they, when they, they agree to a purpose, um, can do amazing things together. And uh, when we go to Mars, uh, the first humans who step foot on Mars, it, it's, it's my belief that uh, we will be representatives of the human race, not of uh, a specific uh, country or region. Hello, I'm Kim Hojanaki, a physics teacher at Houston ISD. I want to know if your philosophy on education has changed since you've been aboard the ISS. I, I don't know that it's changed, but it's certainly re-emphasized uh, some of the things that I believed as an educator uh, when I was in the classroom. Uh, our day-to-day -day existence up here is solving problems. And so it requires critical thinking, analysis of data, 
uh, making a hypothesis and uh, how to solve the problem and then moving forward and, and measuring whether or not you were successful. Uh, the very simple uh, process that is science um, is just a it's a day to day experience up here and um, so it's reemphasized those critical skills, critical thinking and and problem solving that uh, make all of this possible. Hi, Ricky. We're Corahan and Arnold, student at, students at Seabrook Intermediate. Our question is, when did you first decide you were interested in STEM? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to go to Seabrook Intermediate School, but both of my daughters did. And so uh, maybe their interest comes from their experience in the science uh, program there, the STEM program there. Um, Certainly in school, I had uh, teachers going all the way back to elementary school who were really good at uh, exposing exposing students to science and, and kind of the uh, the open ended nature of science. Uh, I think that r really uh, motivated me to uh, to eventually pr pursue a career in STEM. I also have to say that uh, I was also highly uh, inspired by the people who worked and lived in space. Um, both in the Apollo program and the early shuttle program when I was a kid, and also those people who explored our oceans, one of the frontiers on our planet, people like Jacques Cousteau. Hi, Ricky. I'm Dr. Danae Fullwood from the JSC Office of STEM Engagement. If you were to design lessons to teach from space, what would you choose to teach? Well, you know, we've had some great lessons designed for by people on Earth for us that we've done uh, up here or during the year of education on station. And I'm really proud of the work that uh, not only Joe and I, but all of our crew members did to uh, to kind of bring the space station to life as a, as a platform for education. One thing I would uh, I would like to do is uh, to engage students directly as much as possible in some of the science that's actually going up here on space station. Um, we can design demonstrations and, uh, and, and, and student-led experiments, uh, which are great, but to actually get their hands, uh, hands dirty in the, uh, the process of science and the amazing science that's happening up here on the space station, I think that would be something that would be, be really profound. Hi, Ricky. I'm Alex Perryman, an audio engineer who supported most of the education downlinks this year. Could you tell us about the technology that is allowing us to talk to you right now? Yeah, thank you for that. It's been a wonderful experience spending time uh, with students all across the country and around the world um, during my stay here. So very much appreciate all the work that uh, you guys have done to make this possible. And as you know, we have a, a, a fleet of satellites, um, the uh, TDRS satellite system, which we use for not only commanding the International Space Station and real-time downlink of data, which is going on around the clock. Uh, there's science going on here 24 hours a day, 365 days a year with data being fed down to uh, principal investigators all around the world, over 100 countries uh, participating. And so that satellite, of, uh, that fleet of satellites, the TDRS system, makes the payload data, the uh, commanding of the International Space Station, and even uh, things like uh, downlinks with school possible. Hi, Ricky. Uh, I'm Dr. Franklin Allaire, and I'm a professor at the University of Houston downtown. And this is my daughter, Eleanor. You want to say hi? <laughs> I work Hi, with uh, pre-service teachers, helping them to uh, feel comfortable teaching science. And I wanted to know, what advice would you give to new teachers? Yeah, I love the name pre-service teachers because uh, you know they're enter entering a, a, a lifetime of service, and their work is incredibly important and, and incredibly profound. And um, they should be proud of the, the career choice they've made. Uh, I certainly understand, just like anyone else who spent time in a classroom, it's an incredibly demanding job. But the, uh, the rewards at the end of the day, um, and being able to shape, shape the next generation of, of, of explorers, is, uh, it, there's, there's no feeling like it. Um, and the relationships you can build with students and their families, um, it's a, just incredibly rich and rewarding experience. Uh, for for first-time teachers and those starting, stick with it. Um, I, I don't feel like I was a uh, really, really got my feet underneath of me as a as a teacher until probably about year six or seven. Maybe I was a little bit slow, and uh, I really didn't feel like I really started getting um, how learning occurs and um, 
and, and how to really reach a diverse group of, of learners, of individual learners within the classroom, probably until around year nine or 10. So it's a very demanding job, but it's just it's so incredibly important. And I'm so thankful that we have so many young people who are choosing that as a, as a lifetime uh, of, of service. Hi, Ricky. I'm Jan Larson, the Seabrook Intermediate Clear Creek ISD Science Magnet Liaison. All the teachers at Seabrook do send a shout out to you and your family and the girls. What advice about school and coursework do you have for students who want to pursue a STEM degree or a career? It is very nice to hear your voice, and I am so thankful for all the hard work that occurred at the Seabrook uh, Intermediate School and the public schools uh, in the Clear Lake area. Um, I'm a big believer in our public school system. I am a product of, a, of Prince George's County Public Schools in Maryland and the Maryland University Public University system. So uh, I, I'm so thankful for the program. Um, I, you got to find what you love uh, and uh, find that thing that you know makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and go to work and work will not seem like a job uh, and, and do not be intimidated by, by science and, and math. We know that uh, through our studies of brain and brain and how brain development occurs that some kids the skills for, for, for mathematics and science you know, typically don't develop until sometimes after kids are in middle school, uh, when, when they really start to get the ability to understand some of the more abstract concepts. So stick with it. Uh, they don't, don't let people tell you you cannot pursue a, a degree in, in the STEM fields, uh, particularly if it's something you love. Uh, your love of your work will provide enough motivation uh, that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. Hi, my name is Tatum, and I go to Bay Area Christian School. What are your plans for when you get back to Earth? Well, your timing is perfect because uh, my, my friend Drew, Oleg, and I will return to Earth early Thursday morning. Um, and we'll actually be back in Houston early uh, Friday morning. I have, uh, I have my plans. NASA certainly has plans for me for the next uh, 45 days. And most of that will be involved in rehabilitation, uh, we're kind of living science experiments ourselves up here. I talked about uh, the, the work we're doing to prepare uh, for exploring the solar system. So I'll have lots of appointments with doctors, um, uh, you know, around the around the Clear Lake area and at NASA, um, and uh, and then also debriefing, uh, talking about what we learned on this mission, how we can do things better, how I could have done things better. Uh, so it'll be a busy couple of months once I get back. After that. Um, there's plenty of work at NASA, and I'm really excited to get back and, uh, and be a part of this amazing organization that, that uh, makes the, this facility possible. Hi, I'm Connor Morris, an intern at JSC. This question comes from the Office of STEM Engagement at JPL. After all your time on station, how intuitive is it for you to move about, find things, and flow from task to task? Is there anything that is still challenging? I was thinking about that the other day uh, because you cannot uh, sit anything down up here like you do at home. And I wonder if I'm going to be reluctant when I get home to set my keys on the table for fear that they won't be there when I, when I go to pick them up. Um, it's gotten a lot better. It's, it's one of the more challenging environments I've ever worked in. Um, the, uh, the keeping track of tools and, and equipment in a place where, uh, where Newton's laws are on full display uh, 24 hours a day. Um, is is really uh, really challenging. That being said, I, I've I've come up with with ways to to manage all that. Um, but uh, it is it's a it's a challenging environment. Most of our equipment was built to work on Earth, um, and uh, and it, when you take it into a new environment, there's just challenges that go along with it. Hi, Ricky. My name is Liam Camus. And I'm in second grade. Do you have any toys on the space station? We do. We have a few toys up on the ISS. Um, in fact, we, I think, were the first crew to ever play a tennis match uh, on the International Space Station or in space. Uh, uh, my, my buddy Drew brought up some miniature tennis rackets. He only had two of them, and we played doubles. Uh, so two of us had to use... Uh, ping pong paddles for, for tennis. And the fun thing about it was uh, we decided early on that uh, 
you could hit the ball on either side of the net since there's really no up or down for us up here. So as long as it got past the net, uh, you were you were you were good to go. Hey, Ricky, I'm Paula Vargas, one of the artists here at JSC and designer of the year of education on station logo. The interns at Ames want to know what are some of the challenges during the transition to life on station, especially in terms of confinement and isolation. Uh, it's a beautiful logo. Thank you for for doing that. Uh, every time I see it, it's it's just a really nice, really nice thing. Um, you know the. At the isolation, the isolation is uh, is real. I mean, you're separated from your family and friends, and kind of control over your life for for the 297 days we'll be up here. Uh, that being said, we believe why we're here is important, and so when you when you're doing something you believe in and you're doing something that you think is important, the, the challenges kind of seem inconsequential as long as you can make, meet, reach your goal. I think about uh, pre-service teachers, that's kind of the message I'd like to share with them. I mean, if they believe what they're doing is important, there's going to be challenges, and uh, keep plugging ahead until you reach your goal. Uh, confinement, I, I get asked that question a lot, and the space station's huge. It is a uh, um, uh, about the internal volume of a jumbo 747, and we only have six people up here. So there's plenty of room for us to, to live and work and relax. Um, and the having ample windows makes a huge difference. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, during my time here, I feel like I've traveled to locations on the planet that I will never, ever see in real life. Uh, flying over French Polynesia, and I saw Antarctica, the Antarctic Peninsula yesterday, and I'll probably probably never get there. But uh, having that uh, having that opportunity to just gaze at Earth and and see see new places from a vantage point of 240 miles up, uh, it, it, confinement doesn't really become a big deal. When I'm heading home, I'm coming home in a Soyuz, which is a, is a really small spacecraft. I only have to be in there for a few hours on Thursday, uh, but uh, that is a very confining space, and I'm, not, I'm glad I don't have to do that for 197 days, but I guess we would figure out a way to make it work. Hi, Ricky. My name is Sarosh Nandwani, and I'm an intern at JSC at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. What is it like to step out of the airlock for a spacewalk? Yeah, it's the one thing the NBL can't recreate is that first uh, view of Earth from coming out of the airlock. I'll never forget uh, on our last spacewalk, I think it was, uh, we're coming out, you've got six and a half hours plus worth of work that you're trying to keep fresh in your mind because you know you've got a lot to do. Uh, on top of that, you're responsible for kind of controlling your own personal spacecraft, which is your which is your your EMU or your spacesuit. And then you uh, you come out of the hatch, and, and Drew and I were sitting there staring at each other. The 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 sun came up, and he's just there, and I, I'm looking at him. The Earth's behind him, and I could see the Volga River Delta in the Caspian Sea, uh, just this beautiful green lush delta uh, kind of at his feet. And, uh, and I'm trying to keep all the, all the work that I have to do in mind and take care of my spaceship. And, but I was, it's just such an overwhelming sense of, uh, of place. Uh, I took a quick picture um, and then, uh, then we moved on to work. But it's, it's, a, uh, it's a, a feeling you, you will never forget. Hey, Ricky, uh, Kenny Todd here. Uh, uh, it's great to see you and, and great to talk to you. Um, as you said, in 48 hours, you'll be back home on planet Earth. And uh, in addition to that, we're concluding the year of education on station. Um, as you reflect on that, uh, if you could leave something behind uh, to represent the, the year of education on station, what, what would it be? Hey, Kenny, great, great to hear your voice. Uh, yeah, this is a tough question. I think the body of work we left behind hopefully uh, shows what an amazing venue and what amazing platform the International Space Station is uh, for education. As you well know, we're, we're only as good, NASA's only as good as our pipeline of workers. And so utilizing this amazing facili facility for education, if it can inspire students and teachers uh, to, uh, to pursue careers in STEM, and to come be a part of this journey, 
I think that would be a pretty amazing uh, legacy that, uh, that we left behind. This is a wonderful facility for science, but it is every bit as wonderful for education. Hi, Ricky. My name is Amanda Hines, and I am with Microsoft. And I am wondering, what is it like to fly on the Soyuz? Yeah, yeah, my only comparison was to the space shuttle. And I've heard it com uh, the comparison made that the space shuttle on launch, you're, you're kind of a, it's just this big, giant machine. You're carrying up a huge payload. Um, it rumbles, it shakes, and it's just a, an immense feeling of power. And um, But then when you land, it's kind of like landing in a commercial airliner. We landed on a runway in Florida. It was a very smooth landing and um, a very easy return to Earth. The Soyuz was a bit like a sports car coming to orbit. Uh, it was just sleek and very smooth ride, just every bit as fast as the space shuttle, but you just didn't have that kind of rumbling sensation uh, leaving, leaving planet Earth. However, our ride back home, which I have not experienced, but I will tell you about after Thursday, is uh, supposed to be quite a wild ride. Uh, we will be... Uh, Descending under uh, in a ball of fire, and then uh, and then parachutes will deploy, and the vehicle will be swinging around in multiple directions, and then the very end I think has been described as a series of series of explosions followed followed by a car crash. So it will be nothing like um, <laughs> nothing like landing on a runway in uh, in Florida, but I've heard it's probably one of the most exciting rides you could ever have. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. I think we um, have a few words to wrap up from uh, Debbie Condor right here. Ready? Hey, good morning, Ricky. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I'm the Director of External Relations at the Johnson Space Center, and I want to thank you and your crewmates uh, for the incredible year of education on station. From downlinks to demonstrations to completing Krista McAuliffe's lessons, you all have done an amazing job for us as we have put forth this year of education on station. And so we just thank you very much. I just want to say safe travels to you on your way back to Earth. And we look forward to seeing you back on Earth in a few days. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks so much, Debbie, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, hopefully this uh, year of education today is just, uh, you know, a, another step. And uh, we will continue the work up here to inspire children and uh, students around the world to pursue careers uh, that will enable them to come join us on this remarkable journey as we uh, work here in low Earth orbit and head out into the solar system. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from JSC Education. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Our 64th and final downlink event for the year of education in, on Space Station. And uh, as the educational organizations get ready for events like this, they build special plans to get their school and local community involved. Here we have next a look at what one middle school did to make an impact. Being the first New York City public school to participate in NASA's Year of Education on Station was the most unimaginable experience ever to take place in our school. This happens all because one student inspired me to pursue the opportunity. Everything he loved, imagined, and dreamed about space was brought to a realization during this educational downlink. His dream inspired an event that energized an entire school community and had an infinite impact on everyone who viewed, attended, or contributed to it. Thank you, NASA. We are all STEM inspired by you. Um, the downlink meant the world to me. Um, I've always wanted to be an astronaut since I was a little girl, and um, getting to speak to a real-life astronaut really, like, it really touched me really deep. And we had the opportunity to talk to Ricky Arnold live on the International Space Station. It was truly a wonderful event for our students. They were able to ask questions, experience, really what it's like to be a space explorer. The downlink showed me that the people that I wanted to be actually have accomplished things and I could do it too. Yeah! 
one educational event during the year of education on station particularly inspired hope for students and the community. Uh, Joe Acaba spoke with students in Puerto Rico a few months after Hurricane Maria made landfall there. Uh, I never imagined s such a phenomenon could happen right here uh, in my doorstep. We had no water, no food, no gasoline, no communication at all. We wanted to pull through, forget all that happened, and lift up our spirits and lift up the island. This is Joe aboard the International Space Station. I have you loud and clear. I aspire to be someone like him that inspires other people to do their goals and dreams. I want to be like him. I want to go far, and I want to be an example for little kids when I'm older. And he really motivated me to pursue engineering as a career. And really, uh, I saw that that's where I want to go. And before we wrap up, we have one final testimonial about uh, what these uh, education events mean for the students and, and communities involved. That's the last of our event today. Thank you so much for participating in the Year of Education on Space Station. You can share your favorite moments from the year, your goals for studying STEM or pursuing STEM careers, or how you'll use Year of Education on Station content in your classroom by tweeting to at NASA. And thank you again for being part of this special event. Welcome. Welcome to the International Space Station. Space is unique, and uh, space gives us an opportunity to, to learn things that we can't learn on the Earth. That's something called surface tension. And so the neat thing is, at dinner time, I can put my lemonade on my hand and drink it very slowly. Work hard, challenge yourself, but the main thing is, don't give up on yourself. Set your goals high, find a job that you love, and find some work that you love, and uh, that will allow you to do really well and, and make you more competitive. Don't fear failure. That failure is your, your time, it's your moment to learn how to do it better. We'd like to have fun up here. My favorite thing is trying to see how far I can fly through the middle of the space station without bumping into a wall. You can see you can move around very easily. Three, two, one, blast off. <laughs>